All right, thanks for coming back to this channel. Um, I'm Dan Priest, and this channel is dedicated to whatever the heck comes into my mind <laughs> that I want to make, but also to um, raising money for Operation Underground Railroad, which we'll get into. Uh, one of my absolute favorite childhood memories is sliced apples. Uh, I grew up on a farm in northern Utah, and um, we didn't have a ton of money, but we had a lot of space. And in the summer times, we'd run around. And my dad was a my dad was a teacher, so he had the summers off more or less. And we had a lot of projects taking care of our little farm. And sometimes at lunchtime, mom would call us in, and we'd have tuna fish sandwiches and sliced apples. And at some point, we discovered um, dipping them in caramel, and then uh, then I was in heaven. So this one goes out to uh, childhood memory of sliced apples. Um, I didn't want to do just a simple bunch of apples. I wanted to slice them and kind of make them into an exploded look. And so here we go. Uh, you'll notice I sliced them and put them into a freeze dryer. We have one for preserving food. I When I did the uh, the mushroom bowl, I got a lot of comments about people who were concerned that the mushrooms would rot and deteriorate. Well, what I've discovered, well, not me, but somebody who, who discovered freeze drying. Now, the amazing thing is, is um, the process goes through this a cycle of freezing the, the food in this machine. And then it heats it up really quickly while applying a vacuum suction. Uh, we're talking a, a, a a serious vacuum, you know, so there's no air in there. And through this process, all of the moisture is sucked out of the of the item. And if you can keep <clears throat> moisture from going back in, uh, then the food is per preserved for a very long time. Uh, they estimate 20 to 30 years. Well, if you take it to the next level and dunk it in resin bef before it gets um, before the food is rehydrated then it can last literally forever. But the resin soaks into the perfectly dry uh, tissues of, of the item and, um, and the different layers, and it works great. So uh, I had that mushroom bowl in my possession for weeks, and I couldn't tell it had changed at all up until the, up until the time that I shipped it to the buyer. So... Um, it's a bit of an experiment, but I'm quite confident that it'll last forever. Um, one of my sponsors is Starbond. Uh, they do uh, different thicknesses of super glue, which are fantastic. Um, the tenon on this bowl was a little cracked, um, and I didn't want to lose more wood to get it. Um, you know, to make it safer. So I super glued it and it worked out just great. Um, this is a, a lovely chunk of cedar wood. Um, some guy was cutting it down near my office, and I saved a bunch of it, and it's just got amazing grain, real beauty to it. My mom had a cedar chest uh, growing up, and she'd store things in it, and whenever we'd open that up to look for things she wanted to share with us, um, you get that wonderful cedar wood smell, which I love. Some people hate it, but I really like it. And I'm telling you, my entire garage smells like my mom's cedar chest exploded in there for days after I worked on it. So here's my here's my apple inspiration. I actually don't like the the big red delicious ones. I actually like a honey crisp or uh, a different kinds. But in my mind, that's the apple of my youth. Uh, so I had my wife grab me some at the store, and I actually incorporated four of them into this bowl. Um, carving discs on a grinder are the best way I've found of hollowing out windows for these projects. Obviously, you got to be very careful with them. You always have to hit on the on the right edge of the grinder. I saw, I saw some guy on YouTube really get hurt with these, and the mistake he made was allowing the top edge to come into contact with the wood, which of course means it's going to buck up and hit you. But 
be very careful and use the correct edge and use two hands. Um, I've spent hundreds and hundreds of hours using it and it's, it's I'm, not, I'm never gonna say it's perfectly safe, but it can be done correctly and safely just like any power tool. Of course, I'm using all the protection I can, gloves and long sleeve shirt, because this stuff whips off wood so hard, it'll rip your skin apart just from the sandblasting effect. <laughs> so, you know, I don't use a face shield and ear, ear protection and all that. There's a whole bunch of different carving discs out there. When I was first exploring these, um, I tried all kinds of different things you see advertised and from the miniature chainsaw wheels to there's these little blue discs that have uh, spikes welded on it to the ones that look like prickly thorns i'm not very good at describing these but I'm here to tell you the uh, carving wheel i show you there is by far the best i've found it lasts the longest too I, i've tried the chainsaw wheel thing and it's doesn't last very long. You gotta sharpen those a lot, just like a chainsaw. So, the other thing I really liked are these sanding discs. Uh, this is a 40 grit sanding disc. They last a long time. And they actually remove a lot of wood too. Uh, you can actually carve with them to a point, uh, at least the final shaping, and it leaves a very nice finish if you've got a soft touch. Um, so, I think the most commonly used tool of any project I do is the uh, air compressor and a nozzle. So I had to laugh. I get to this point in the project and I realize I've created a giant apple core. <laughs> For some reason I thought that was really funny. There's an old uh, cartoon out there that uh, it says apple core, ulamore. You say to say to somebody, you say apple core and they say ulamore. And you say, who's your friend? And they say somebody, and you throw the apple core at it. Another memory of my childhood. <laughs> so, there you are. A peek into my crazy brain. When we were done freeze drying these, I, did, I wasn't ready to make this vase. And so um, Harvest Right, this freeze drying company, has these bags where if you were intending on saving the food for years and years, you could put it in, and you put a little oxygen packet in there that keeps the oxygen whatever oxygen is in there at a minimum to prevent um, uh, things from rotting and falling apart. So anyway, I had to put them in these bags because I wasn't ready to put them on the project and dunk it in resin and save it. And so one thing I didn't count on is when I brought them out of the bag, I had to rearrange the apple slices and it was a bit of a puzzle. you think it'd be easy, <laughs> but <laughs> they change shape a little bit in the freeze dryer. They're not a perfect slice, so I spent more time than I care to admit trying to put these back together. Um, this Starbond glue is just fantastic. It comes with an accelerant if you buy it. So you squirt the glue on there, squirt the accelerant on there before or after, it doesn't really matter. And it'll harden within seconds, uh, which makes it possible to mount all kinds of, or, or many items really quickly. Um, I'm always wearing air, um, a respirator because it stinks and I don't think it's good to inhale that stuff. My next step in the evolution of my shop is to get a some kind of metal cover for my table, stainless steel or something because I'm I'm a messy artist. I always leave a big mess and I need a surface I can clean. Right now it's covering with garbage bags until I destroy it and then start over, but that's the next thing I want to do. So this was a bit big for my pressure pot, and so I've uh, figured out a technique of creating a mold, a form, out of uh, a, a vessel filled with sand. You put inside that uh, plastic sheeting. In this case, it's padding used for flooring. This is padding you put under uh, on different hardwood floors to, to dampen the noise, which is great stuff because it doesn't really um, stick to resin especially if you use the shiny side. Um, I've been using clips because you, you do get these folds, um, trying to wrap a sheet around a 3D object, you get all these different folds, and so I clip them to kind of minimize the resin escaping into the folds. And then I put sand around the outside, put the mold in, or, or the item in there, and kind of 
mold the sand around it so that the wasted resin is a minimum. One step I, I didn't show here was that after I poured the resin, um, I put little bits of paper around the top to kind of make it all go around the wood as much as I could. The thick set, fav thick set resin by Total Boat, it's called Fathom, is absolutely fabulous stuff. The reason I like it is it takes uh, at least 24 hours, maybe 36 hours, depending on the temperature in the room and how much you've poured for it to set up. Uh, this allows it to, s to s soak into the wood, soak into, in this case, the apple slices and really preserve things, get into the cracks of the wood and, and stabilize things that may not be um, safe to turn on the, on the lathe. you also notice I put the tenant up, facing up in my project. Took me a while to realize I could, I should do this. It seems obvious now, but uh, I love this idea because you don't have to worry about remaking a tenon or chiseling off resin. So this is my my vacuum chamber. Um, again, for projects that won't fit in a pressure pot, this is an absolute godsend. Um, you could run it at a certain pressure and let it foam, and just let the foam bubbles pop. I think it's going to take a while for that to happen and so I like to let the pressure drop and then let air in there and repeat that again and again so you'll see it rising and dropping to the surface multiple times and I'm just trying to encourage the bubbles to pop as fast as I can but when you're done you get absolute crystal clear resin um, there's a little something that was floating in there that I had to get out but other than that it's absolutely crystal clear you get rid of those tiny micro bubbles that you can see in resin unless you use a pressure pot or a vacuum chamber. And I've, I've really, really liked it. Now the, uh, the sin I committed on this project was I didn't prep the wood beforehand. Why you might ask, because you've seen, if you've seen other projects, uh, I, I keep c complaining about bubbles that come out of the wood. And uh, the simple answer is I'm just lazy. <laughs> the more I learn about how to do this stuff, the more steps I introduce to make it better and better, even down to video editing and photography and all that. And man, one project takes a long time. And I just, that's one more step I've haven't quite done just because it means another evening of pouring resin and doing something. And I just want to get to it. And I get impatient. And, but I did, I did get bubbles that came out of the wood. I, I was hoping that I, with a, with a vacuum chamber and that and, and the long setting resin that it would have enough time to soak into the wood and all the bubbles would come out and be fine. I think the problem is is that any resin when it sets up does go through a chemical reaction. That's how it works, which is exothermic, releases some heat. And I think that reaction reacts with wood and releases bubbles at the last minute. And, and the reason I say that is when you pour it in there, you, know, you can check on it every few hours and it looks absolutely crystal clear. There are no bubbles, nothing. But then bubbles show up. And I think I think it's because when the when the resin finally sets, there's some stage in that setting process that uh, uh, agitates the wood and makes makes bubbles show up. So so this project finally broke me. Next time I'm I'm gonna prep the wood. <laughs> I don't think you'll see it very well here, but I make a mistake which turned out to be kind of a blessing. Um, this uh, cedar wood with resin at certain angles in the grain is just rock hard, and it's really, really hard to turn. So I pulled out my carbide tip um, tool here, which is very aggressive. And it's just a regular cut tip. It's nothing special, a uh, flat carbide bit. The problem is, is in the resin It'll turn beautifully, you'll get these ribbons coming off and it's nice and smooth, but on occasion it'll catch and it starts to chip the resin. And usually that's not that big a deal, you just come back with another tool and smooth it. But in this case, for some reason on this project, it broke some really deep chips out. And so I was faced with a, a conundrum. I, I, you'll see me sit here and glue it a number of times, trying to, in, in hopes that the glue would get in underneath the crack and make it disappear which I was fine with, but it, I could never get it to look good. So I got about halfway done with this thing and I thought, you know what, wouldn't it be kind of cool if we made um, 
a bite mark out of the apple. <laughs> so I went for it and, and made a, a channel right in the center, which got through the skin of three out of the four apples, which made it look like somebody had taken a bite. Um, so I thought that was kind of a cool thing. Probably a bit much for some people. I often think as I'm making these projects that somebody out there is going, okay, he should have just left the wood as it is and skipped the resin. It looks beautiful, and you'd be absolutely right. And then I add resin, and somebody's probably, okay, stop here. Don't add any more. And then I have to add another thing, and I'm sure I'm losing people along the way where they, they're saying, oh, my gosh, it was way better before. But you know what? You just commit and send it. you gotta got to be adventurous, and I actually don't regret the way this turned out. It looks awesome. Some criticisms I have for this piece was one of the apples was kind of odd shaped and <clears throat> you'll notice one of the four windows the apple peters way into nothing because as I was as I was turning that end of the apple was very thin and um, you know you just you can't always predict where the wall is going to end up when you hollow it out in that and uh, so I lost a bit of the one apple but other than that I'm actually quite happy with how this thing turned out. I might attempt another one in the, in the future. The other uh, criticism I have for myself is my Forzner bits that you'll see right here um, obviously need to be sharpened. <laughs> it smells like a little bit of smoke at the, at the end there. Okay, a lot of smoke, but uh, slowing down the lathe and sharpening it obviously would solve that problem. But again, uh, lack of time and energy, and you, sometimes you just go for it. Um, as always, uh, my projects are ded dedicated to Operation Underground Railroad. Uh, these guys are fantastic, amazing people that fight child sex trafficking around the world. Uh, this organization has saved about 4,000 kids so far and made 2,000 arrests for people who do the trafficking, pedophiles, and so on. I can't think of a better cause that the majority of us agree on and uh, hope to get your support. You can support us in a million different ways. Uh, there's donations you can make right through YouTube or right through the fundraiser on our website at Art for OUR. You can donate pieces, uh, wood pieces, painting, jewelry, whatever. We've got about 70 artists who've donated things. And uh, so far, we've raised almost $30,000. We're about to crack that mark this month, I think. So we'd love your support. Uh, you can do paid memberships to the channel, uh, you know, a few bucks a month. Uh, just watching my videos and sharing them helps us raise money just through the advertising deal with with YouTube which is actually one of our more uh, profitable ways of raising money so uh, whatever you can come up with is obviously always appreciated um, we'll see you on the next project and uh, thank you for your time have a great day <laughs>